الحالة الأولى ولا تقرب الفواحش الفواحش الفحش هو الشيء القبيح هو الشيء المجاوز للحد عند العرب يسمى فحشا فأمرنا ألا نقترب مجاوزة الحد في القبح أو الارتباط بالقبح إما في القول أو في السلوك في الشهوات الغريزية في التصرفات البهيمية والسبوعية أمرنا ألا نقترب من الأسباب التي تنمي ذلك في نفوسنا So he says the, 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 the verse says don't even go near فحش فحش meaning that which is reprehensible which is abhorrent and to the Arabs anything the thing which was abhorrent was anything that went over the limit that went to excess so it's not go, to not go near to something which is excessive in terms of what you say excessive in terms of what you do excessive in terms of anger excessive in terms of, of lust and not to, not to even go near the things that will, that will cause those things to grow in you and nurture those, those, those vices in you والحالة الثانية التي نهى فيها عن الاقتراب النهي عن الاقتراب من مال اليتيم ولا تقربوا مال اليتيم السبب عن نهي عن مجرد الاقتراب أن الاقتراب يستدرج صاحبه في هاتين الخصلتين and he says and then the, 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 the next commandment is do not even go near the, the, the inheritance of the orphan or the wealth of the orphan and not to go in near it because if you start drawing near to it you'll be pulled in and, and in, those, in those two commandments where it says don't go, go near because you'll get pulled in the nearer you draw then you'll get pulled in في الحالة الأولى بمغناطيس الشهوة وفي الحالة الثانية بمغناطيس الطمع and he said the, in the first state because of the magnetism of one's own lust and one's own lower desire and in the second because of the magnetism of, of being covetous of that money and these, and these two things covetousness and desire or caprice overwhelm the intellect and when they overwhelm the intellect they blind one from being able to stop and draw and, and hold and hold uh, uh, drain themselves in فلا يفيد الخطاب العقلاني المنطقي في لحظة ثوران الشهوة ولا يفيد في لحظة ثوران الطمع he says you know being logical or, 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 or speaking to one's intellect doesn't have an impact when one is is under the agitation of, of one's desire and one's covetousness. And that's why we were enjoined to keep away from even drawing near to anything that will, that any of its means or anything that would bring this about. And and he said, one of the understandings of the verse, and do not go, draw near abhorrent things, the manifest of them and the unmanifest, meaning one of the means that can be derived from that is do not use the bounties of God in things that will only serve to agitate your lower desires. A few months ago, we began, we began a television program called Our Life. كان السؤال الأول في الحلقة الأولى ثمرة من ثمرات هذا المؤتمر يا فوزان. He said the first the 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 theme of the first program was a fruit of this conference, فوزان. عندما كان السؤال في السنة الماضية لو قيل لأحدكم أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم سيزور منزلك بعد أسبوع ماذا تحتاج أن تغيره في حياتك؟ and he said the question was if the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was to visit your house next week what would you have to change in your life to be able to greet him? He said some people called it the shock question. لكن الذي يعنينا هنا في قوله تعالى ولا تقرب الفواحش أن هذا السؤال بنيت عليه أسئلة من ضمنها أن النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم إذا زار أحدكم في بيته سيفعل ما كان يفعله في حياته الأولى 
عندما كان يلاطف الشباب يسأل الشباب عن اهتماماتهم يشاركهم في اهتماماتهم وعند إذن. He said, but if the Prophet was here, he would carry on like he was when he was in this world, which was he'd visit the young people and he would speak to them in a manner that would be befitting and in a manner that would draw them and and he would in that way he would be able to he would advise them. He said, the Prophet ﷺ would ask you, brother, and would ask you, sister, and this question is to our youth. How do you communicate with one another? He said, you'd naturally probably say Facebook. Twitter? Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> He said, did I, did I pronounce it correctly or not? And he said, because the Prophet was a trainer of souls, like he used to ask Sayyid Aisha about the details of certain things, maybe he'd just say to you, do you mind showing me your Facebook page? He said, tonight go back to your Facebook page, open it up, and just look at it and think if the Prophet was next to me, what would you have to, what would you have to delete? It's said. He said, what I ask myself sometimes when I, when I look is where it says on the home page, interests, women, or interests, men. And I'm thinking, what do you mean? Do you mean you're concerned about women's rights? What are you talking about here? <laughs> وهذا الحق يرتبط بالقضاء عندنا في الشريعة فلا يجوز لأحد أن يستقل باسم أنه يقتل بالحق دون الرجوع إلى القضاء أو جهاد تحت راية ولي أمر مسلم غير متعد في فعله And he said, and he said the command not to kill a soul except in justice or in truth that, 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 that the uh, Corporal, corporal punishment can only be done by a judiciary and therefore no, no one has the right to take to become a vigilante and take the law into their own hands and, and uh, the, military, the military struggle which is jihad in the military sense can only be done by a, by a, a Muslim leader who is not an aggressor. وكانت بقية الأربع التي تحتاج إلى تأمل ولهذا أدعو الجميع الذين يتقنون العربية إلى أن يرجعوا إلى تفسير هذه الآيات لا سيما في تفسير الإمام القرطبي. He said we only have a minute left, so I would and we've we've still got more of the commandments to cover, but I'd advise those of the brothers and sisters who read Arabic to to refer back to the. Uh, to the commentary of Imam Qurtubi in the Surah Al-An'am which, which go, delves into the, into the Ten Commandments. And those and who don't Arabic can go to the translate what's available in terms of English translations of commentaries. He said, and lastly, the whole thing revolves around being God-conscious. And when, the Prophet, and when the Prophet وسلم, mentioned being God conscious, he pointed to his blessed breast and said, 
God, being God conscious is something here. أي التقوى محلها القلب هذا معنى؟ said, are you being conscious of God? The loci of being conscious of God and the faculty that is conscious of God is the heart. والمعنى الثاني صدره الشريف صلى الله عليه وسلم. And the other meaning is his blessed, blessed, blessed breast in particular. فعلى قدر تعلق كل واحد منكم بصدق محبته صلى الله عليه وسلم يتلقى أنوار التقوى في حياته. He said, in proportion to your love for him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, each of you will receive the light of being God-conscious.